finally, this AI image generator can make 4K images natively. I mean, look at the amount of detail of these images. There's no longer any need for upscalers. Best of all, this is free and open source and potentially uncensored. So the tool is called DYPE and I actually featured this in one of my news videos when it first came out. But in today's video, I'm going to do a full installation tutorial so you can actually install this on your computer and generate 4K images for free and unlimited times offline. First of all, here are some of their official demos. Here is one of their sample generations, and if I zoom in really close, notice that it's still extremely detailed. Like, this is a legit 4K resolution image. There's no upscaler needed. This can just generate high resolution images right out of the box. I mean, even the stuff in the background looks super sharp and detailed. Or here's another example. If I zoom in, notice the details of everything are super sharp, including the stuff in the background and the foreground. Like the amount of detail in these images are really high. And then here's another example. If we zoom in, you can clearly see all the details of her armor. Like this is again, incredibly detailed. Here's another 4K example for your reference. And again, if I zoom in, even the details of the plants and of course the astronaut, but also the mountains in the background. Everything is just very sharp and high resolution. Now, here's the problem with traditional image models and why DYPE is such a big deal. You see, for all older models like Quen Image or Flux or Stable Diffusion, they mostly do well at lower resolution images like 1024 by 1024. You could set the width and height to a high resolution image like 496 by 496, but because it's not trained from such high resolution data, you get some weird images like this. So these older models can't really actually generate high resolution images natively. Whereas for DYPE, I mean, if I zoom in, look at the amount of detail of this image. This is just incredible. Or here's another example using flux with the same prompt. And as you can see, it could kind of generate something, but the proportions are kind of wrong. And then it's just not very high quality. Whereas for DYPE, this just looks way sharper and way more detailed. Here's another example for your reference. If we try to generate a gray picture using flux, you can see that at high resolutions, it just completely fails to generate anything that's proportionally correct. But as you can see, DYPE does not have these proportional issues, plus everything is just way more detailed. Now, those are just some of their official demos. Let me show you some of my personal demos as well. So here's what the interface looks like. And don't worry, in the latter half of the video, I'm going to show you step by step how to install this and use it. But anyways, here is my prompt. It's just a close up portrait of a woman. And here's what we get. And if I open this image up and then I zoom way in, notice it even captures like the details of her skin and her eyes, like her eyebrows, her eyelashes. It's all very very sharp. The amount of detail is just insane. And then if we look at her nose and mouth again, this is just extremely detailed. You can even see like the facial hair on the bottom of her lip. This is incredible. Instead of a close up portrait of a woman, let's try a meadow of flowers, the Rockies in the background, and it's going to be a beautiful landscape photo. And this time for the width and height, let's make this a wider image. So let's set the width to something like 3000 and then press run. And here's what we get. Now, again, let me open up this image and then zoom way in. And as you can see, the details of all the flowers and the grass are super sharp. I mean, this can easily be blown up into like a huge poster on someone's wall. If I now scroll to the background, even like some of the trees and the mountains are still very sharp and detailed. Now, of course, for landscape photos, it is expected that the background is slightly blurrier than the foreground. So it's not as detailed as like the flowers in the foreground. But overall, as you can see, this is an incredibly detailed and high resolution photo. Next, let me set this back into a square image and then let's try this prompt portrait of a cat on a sofa. Let's click run. All right, here's the result. And again, let me just open this image up separately. 
And then let me zoom way in. And as you can see, the details of the cat, especially its fur, the eyes, the whiskers, it's very sharp and high resolution. And then let me just pan down a bit for you to inspect the entire cat. I mean, all this fur is very detailed and even the texture of this sofa's fabric is also insanely sharp and detailed. So again, this is an incredibly powerful tool for generating high resolution images. Instead of realistic photos, let's try something like oil painting of a forest in autumn and then press run. So here's my results. And if I open this up and zoom way in, you can clearly see like the individual brush strokes of this oil painting. Everything is just very detailed. I mean, this is definitely the best open source high resolution image generator you can use right now without needing to do any upscaling. Now, of course, you could plug this through an upscaler to blow it up even more. But I mean, even this is high resolution enough to be a large sized poster. All right, well, enough demos. Let's go over how to set this up. If you scroll up to the top of the page, they have this nice GitHub repo for you to check out. So let's click on this. And if you scroll down a bit, here they provide you some code on how to install and run this. However, over here, you kind of have to work with raw code. There's no like intuitive graphical interface for you to use. So what we're going to do instead is use ComfyUI, which is the top platform for running open source image, video and audio generators offline. If you haven't heard of ComfyUI, definitely see this video first for a full installation tutorial. Anyways, back to today's video, I'm going to assume you already have ComfyUI installed. So instead of this official GitHub repo and these instructions, we are going to use this other repo, which is called ComfyUI DYPE by Wildminder. And this is going to allow us to use DYPE directly within ComfyUI. So next, let's go over how to set this up. If you scroll down a bit here, it contains all the instructions. So one way is to just search for ComfyUI DYPE in ComfyUI Manager and then click Install. Or alternatively, what I like to do is just install everything manually. So the first step is to clone this repository in our custom nodes directory. So I'm going to head over to my ComfyUI folder and then click on ComfyUI and then click on the custom nodes folder. And then at the top here, I'm going to type CMD to open this folder up in command prompt. Next, all we need to do is copy this line and then paste it in here and press enter. All right, so that was pretty quick. And as you can see, it has successfully cloned this repository. So the next step is I can just proceed to run ComfyUI. Now, the nice thing about ComfyUI is you don't need to build all these nodes and noodles from scratch. You can just drag and drop an existing workflow onto your interface and everything will be pre-built for you. So going back to our ComfyUI folder, let's click on ComfyUI and then custom nodes and then look for this DYPE folder, which we just downloaded because inside there's gonna be this example workflows folder, which will contain this workflow JSON file. So all we need to do is drag and drop this onto our ComfyUI interface and voila, here is the entire workflow pre-built for you. Let me tell you about this awesome tool called Chat LLM by Abacus AI, the sponsor of this video. Chat LLM is an all-in-one platform for you to use the best AI models out there. You can seamlessly switch between different models, plus you can use the best image generators out there and the best video generators out there all in one integrated platform. Plus, if you're coding something, they have a really useful artifacts feature so that you can preview your generation side by side. Plus, they have a deep agent feature which can do really complex tasks all autonomously, like creating PowerPoints, websites, and research reports. It's gonna supercharge your productivity. You can access all these AI models and image and video generators and Deep Agent for only $10 a month. This is way cheaper than if you paid for each tool separately. Definitely check out Chat LLM that comes with Deep Agent in the description below. Now, before you can run this, the next step is we also need to download some additional models that this needs. All the model links are specified up here. Let's first proceed to download this FluxCrea Dev FP8 scaled model. This will be in charge of generating the image. And this goes in Comfy UI, and then in Models, and then in Diffusion Models. As you can see, I already have this installed, and this is roughly 11 gigabytes in size, so keep that in mind. 
And then afterwards, let's also proceed to download these text encoders. So let's click on this first one, clip L, which will take us to this page. Notice that this one is 246 megabytes. So let's click download. And this goes in Comfy UI, in models, and then in text encoders. And then afterwards, we can choose to download this FP16 text encoder or this FP8 one. Of course, if you're running lower VRAM, then it's recommended that you download this one because it's way smaller at the sacrifice of some quality. So I'm going to click on this and this also goes in Comfy UI, in models, and then text encoders. As you can see, I have this here already and note that this is five gigabytes in size. And then finally, you also need to download this VAE to encode and decode the image. So let's click on this, and this goes in Comfy UI, in Models, and then VAE. Note that this one is around 327 megabytes. All right, so after you've downloaded all those models, we can now proceed to use this workflow. After you've downloaded the models, it's best to first press the R key to refresh your models list so it will show up in these dropdowns. All right, so the first component here is where you would load up all your downloaded models. So let's click on each dropdown and select the model that I just downloaded. So for example, here, I need to select Flux Crea Dev FP8. And then over here, I need to select Clip L. Here, I need to select this one, T5 XXL FP8 Scaled. And then here, I need to select AE.Safe Tensors. And that's pretty much it. All right, so moving on to step two, here is where you would specify the width and the height of your output image. And then batch size is how many images you want to generate at once. Let's just keep it at the default values for now. And then moving on to step three, here is where you would enter your prompt describing the image. So for example, let's try aerial view of an ancient city in the forest. And then moving on to here, here is where the magic happens. So this component is basically in charge of generating the high resolution image using flux. Notice that there's also a width and height setting here, but it's recommended not to touch these values. So if you look at this card over here, here it says you should keep the values below 1024 by 1024. Doing so won't affect your output. Notice that this is not the width and height of the final image. That is determined over here. And then honestly, the only thing that you need to adjust in this component is this DYPE exponential value. So if you scroll over here, it explains what this exponent value is. So it basically controls the strength of the dynamic effect over time. If you're generating really high resolution images like 4K or above, then it's recommended to set this value at two or higher. For like 2K to 3K resolution images, then you can set this value to one. And then for anything lower, then you can set this to 0.5. But if it's lower, then you don't really need to use DYPE. You can just use flux. Anyways, let's just keep it at the default of three, but sometimes for 4K images, setting this to two also works very well. And then here is where you can choose to use Sage Attention which is basically a way to speed up your generations by a bit, but this does require you have Sage Attention installed first, which is kind of a pain in the ass to install for Windows. So you can either set this to auto, which means if you don't have Sage Attention, it's just going to revert back to the defaults, or you can just disable it if you want to explicitly not use Sage Attention. For me, I'm just gonna set this to auto. And then here for FP16 accumulation, this only works if you have a newer version of PyTorch, I believe 2.7 or higher. So if you have a lower version of PyTorch, then this is not gonna work. So what I like to do is just click on this and then press Control B to disable or bypass this. And then moving on to uh, the final component, which is the K sampler, which you should be familiar with if you've been watching my previous ComfyUI tutorials. Here we have the seed, which basically determines the starting point of the image. Like in theory, there could be an infinite amount of images of an aerial view of an ancient city in the forest. And the seed of 42 is just one of them. If you keep all the settings the same and the same seed, it's going to generate the exact same image as before. But if you set the seed to a different value, then it's going to generate a slightly different image. So what I like to do is actually just set this to randomize. So it's going to randomly assign a seed to my generation. And then the step count, this is basically how many steps it takes for the model to generate the image. In general, the more steps you have, the higher quality it will be, but it's going to take slower. And then a lower step count, 
would generate faster, but at the sacrifice of some quality. CFG is basically how literally you want the AI to follow your prompt. But for Flex Crea Dev, it's actually recommended to set this CFG value to one. So I wouldn't really touch this much. And then sampler name and scheduler, these are basically the algorithm that is used to generate the image. You can see there are a ton of different algorithms for you to choose from. Euler seems to be the best for Flex Crea Dev, but feel free to play around with these other options. And that's pretty much it. Let's start by generating this aerial view of a city in the forest. All right, so here's what I get. And that took roughly four minutes for my 16 gigabyte GPU to generate. Notice that this is a very high resolution image, so it's going to take minutes rather than seconds. But here we go. Here is our ancient city in the forest. And note that this is a save image node. So it's automatically saved in this Flux Crea folder in your ComfyUI output folder. Again, let me just open this up and expand this so you can see how incredible the details are. This is really good. Now it's time to address the most important question because I'm sure your end goal is to generate high definition corn. So is this actually uncensored? One thing to note is that Flux is not the most uncensored model, which is like XDXL or variants of that or WAN, but you can get away with some uncensored stuff using Flux LoRa's. And the awesome thing is you can add LoRa's to this. So next, I'm also gonna show you how to load up LoRa's in this workflow. Now, there are a ton of Flux LoRa's that you can choose from. Of course, for YouTube, I can't share any explicit stuff, but let's try something like this glitch LoRa. So I'm just gonna download this, and then this goes in Comfy UI, and then Models, and then LoRa's. Let's click Save. Afterwards, all we need to do is, let me just drag this out. We basically need to add a LoRa between this and this. So let me just double click anywhere on the canvas and type LoRa. And we are gonna use this one, LoRa loader model only. And then I'm just going to connect this over here and then this one over here. So I'm basically adding this middle step to add a LoRa. Let's click on this dropdown and select this glitch LoRa. All right, so going back here, it says at least for this LoRa, there's no dedicated trigger word, but it's best to use one of these phrases. So let's use this one surrounded by graphical images and text. And then here I'm gonna put a woman in a city and then surrounded by graphical images and text. So let's click run and see what that gives us. Here's the results and as you can see, it's indeed able to use my LoRa and generate this glitchy style image. And again, this is very detailed and high definition. Anyways, that sums up my installation tutorial on DYPE. Let me know what you think of this, and if you run into any errors during the installation, welcome to paste your error message in the comments below, and I'll try to help you troubleshoot as much as possible. As always, I will be on the lookout for the top AI news and tools to share with you. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, there's just so much happening in the world of AI every week, I can't possibly cover everything on my YouTube channel. So to really stay up to date with all that's going on in AI, be sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter. The link to that will be in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.